blade and quill. Hello and welcome back. This is the last video for the series on the six modes of a transform tool. Over the course of the different episodes of this series, we looked at the free mode of transformation, the perspective mode, the warp mode, the cage mode, and last week we studied the liquify mode. Today we are going to study the mesh. Before to start, I have an important announcement to make. A new version 4.4.3 of Krita was released a few days ago. This was done in order to fix uh, crashes and to improve the stability and performance of the software. If you have read, like me, the announcement on their website, you may also have read that Krita's software developers are now focusing on Krita's 5. Now I know what you are thinking, uh, my series all about the previous version. Are all what I taught going to be obsolete? The answer is no, just remember this, uh, never worry about the new releases coming up in the next few years. The developers are most likely going to keep the tools the same way. They may add, modify or remove features to already existing tools or functionalities, or they may create brand new tools or remove some altogether. The fact is that whatever you have learned so far with me is still going to be relevant for many years. My job will be to keep you posted and updated so you are in good hands. First, let's get to the transform tool in the toolbox, or we can use the shortcut Ctrl T to activate it. In the Tool Options Docker, we are going to click on this last icon. This is the mesh mode of the transform tool. As you can see, as soon as I clicked on it, a new set of actions appeared below. We can increase or decrease the number of columns and rows by clicking the arrows located on the side of each box, or we can type directly a number. First, let's talk about a few things. What you see here is a mesh frame. It can also be described as a big patch. A patch is an area surrounded by nodes. Here we have four corner nodes. When you add columns and rows, you create patches. Let's do that. Now look, this is a patch, this is a patch, and this is a patch. You can curve a patch by using its handles. If you think about it, uh, handles are like uh, some mini Bezier curve tools. When you move a handle, both parts of the handles are moving at the same time since they are locked together at their core. This is to allow the movement to be symmetrical. You can unlock this handle by holding the shift key while clicking on it. As you can see, the little lock icon is now gone. So now you can move that part of the handle freely. Please know that the unlocking is not permanent. As soon as you are done moving and you step away, the lock icon is back. You can also lock or unlock the handles by checking or unchecking this box. If you have too many patches on your image, the mesh will be filled with nodes and handles. It can make uh, your mesh look uh, terribly busy. So if you want to create a lighter work environment, just uncheck this box and the handles will become invisible.
border nodes are located exclusively on the border of your mesh. Any nodes inside the mesh are the mesh nodes. You can move the corner nodes, you can do whatever you want and create interesting shapes. There is a shortcut to add a new border and mesh nodes without having to use the column or row box. But most importantly, this method is going to allow you to add nodes wherever you want them to be. To add border nodes, just hold the Ctrl and the Alt key on your keyboard as you click anywhere on the border. Do the same in the mesh. Now you could also say that you have split your mesh into sections. Hold the Ctrl plus Alt and click and drag the nodes away from the frame. Click on any nodes on the border. Hold the Ctrl and Alt key as you move the node. Now you can see that the waves are following my movement. I think that's pretty amazing. There is a distinct difference between sliding a node or moving a node. Look, when I click on the shift key, I can move everything. Now be careful to not overstretch and damage your image. If you step away from the mesh frame, you will see the infamous rotating arrows. This means that you can now turn the image. To rotate a specific part located in the inside of a mesh, first select a few nodes by holding the Ctrl key on your keyboard, just like I showed you in the warp tutorial video. The nodes will highlight when selected. To rotate your selection, now the only thing you need to do is step away from the mesh frame and move things around. To clear your selection, just click on any of the nodes located beside it. To scale your image, you are going to follow the exact same methods, but this time you are going to hold the Ctrl key on your keyboard when you step away from the frame. As you can see, the rotating icon has been replaced by a white two-headed arrow. To scale your image, just hold the Ctrl key as you click and drag your mouse up or down the canvas. Now let's repeat what we did earlier with the uh, rotate uh, functionality and uh, let's select a few more nodes inside the mesh. As usual, you are holding the control key to select the nodes. To scale this uh, selection, step away from the mesh frame. Now holding the control key, you are going to uh, click and drag your mouse up and down the canvas. Before to start, make sure that this box is checked. To scale the bottom of your image, you just click on the Ctrl key as you click on the bottom border of your mesh. Now using the same technique as earlier, just hold the Ctrl key as you click and drag the image. To move your image around the canvas, step away from the mesh frame. If you hold the shift key this time, a new icon will replace the rotating icon into a four-headed arrows icon. In order to move the image, you will need to hold the shift key as you are clicking on your mouse. You can now drag the image around.
Let's say that you rotated this portion of your image too far. Do not use the reset button unless you want to restart from scratch. If you want to go backward a few steps, use the Ctrl Z shortcut. Before to continue, I would like to thank you all for watching this series. I am new at YouTube and the fact that you chose me and trusted me to be your tutor means a lot to me. I am going to wrap this image on the top of this cylinder. First, let's scale the image since it's too big. I am leaving some breathing space on purpose, this way my image will fit perfectly on the cylinder. Next, I need to rotate the image to align it with the cylinder's direction. Now I am ready to wrap. To do so, I just need to click and drag the top and the bottom of the image. Now don't forget to move the image if needed to make sure the wrap curve matches the top and bottom of the cylinder. And we are done! The only thing left to do is to erase whatever we don't want. You can use the same technique to wrap something a little more complicated. Here I am going to rotate the mesh first to match the direction of a funny looking cylinder. Then I am going to move it around to make sure I place it nicely. Now just like earlier I am going to move the top and bottom of the mesh, but this time I am going to also move the corners and the handles. Obviously, here I am not doing a great job, I am damaging my pattern. Please don't do that, be more careful. The main purpose of this demonstration is to show you how to manipulate the corners and handles. Ok guys, I just realized I forgot to show you one more thing regarding the patches. So I am going to use uh, this pattern to show you. I am going to add uh, one border node in the middle of each side of a mesh. Alright, so now we have our four patches uh, in the mesh. The thing that I forgot to show you when we only have a few patches is that if you move one around, uh, all the neighbor patches will move as well. It gets pretty annoying, right? Uh, unless, of course, uh, you want them to move as well for your project. Now look what happens when I create more patches. Now if I move the very top patches, the one located at the very bottom are not impacted. Uh, This is because they are not directly connected. The patches in the middles are separating them. So here I'm going to create a nice little wave. And to do so, I am manipulating the handles up and down. And just a last reminder, don't ever forget that when you are working and creating uh, some special effects, you can always rotate, scale and move your creation. Alright, uh, we are done with this series on the mode of the transform tool. Next week we'll take a break from learning and we'll do something fun for a change. So until then, keep practicing and I'll see you next Monday. Bye!